Welcome in. I'm Jessica Mori and I am joined by the 39th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft offensive lineman Tevin Jenkins. He is the newest member of the Chicago Bears. Thank you so much for joining me, Tevin. And what was it like when you got that call from the Bears? Uh, first thing, you know, is that excitement that pulls through you. You know, all that adrenaline hit me. Uh, my heart sank a little bit because I had my phone just right there on my lap. Felt the buzz as soon as I felt the buzz. I was smiling, you know, I was like, uh, we had to mute the TVs, make sure nothing's like, make sure there's no background noise, picked it up. Uh, ended up talking to the scouting department first, you know, they said uh, they were passing me over to coach, uh, talked to him for a little bit, you know, and then he just said they're excited to have me. I was excited to even get that phone call, you know, and just, uh, just to express my feelings. Like it was like uh, many different emotions because all that, like, all that, like hard work, all that, time I put in it started to pay off at that one moment you know and at that moment all that stuff just came to fruition and just seeing all my family members all light up around me too when I hung up the phone it was just it felt really good and what was it like getting to celebrate with your family you get the phone call and then obviously you get to unmute the TV and see uh, hear your name called uh, what was that like oh it was it was great you know this uh, as soon as I put it down grab that grab the draft hat and uh, all my family members around just started getting on their phones like so they could record it, you know, it's just something that they're like they're proud of me, so they want to show it off, of course. So that's a great thing to be able to say that I made anybody else prouder than myself because that's the one thing I strive to be and strive to do. And just being able to hear uh, my name get announced on TV and see my face up there, it was just uh, exhilarating. Like it was just an amazing moment for me and my family. And as soon as that happened, the first thing I did was stand up, give my dad a hug because of all the sacrifices he did for me and my family, my, like growing up. And after that, I just went around, went to individual mem members that were there, and I you know, just kept on hugging them, appreciating them for coming, like doing the little things that I, throughout my whole life that made me who I am today. And you were the first Big 12 player taken in this year's draft. How cool is that when you think back to that? Uh, when I actually think back to it, it's actually very cool to me because I didn't, uh, Personally, I didn't expect to be the first Big 12 guy to get off the board, but uh, learning this, uh, I say it's actually exciting for myself and for Oklahoma State to say that we were actually uh, able to produce the first Big 12 uh, pick uh, this year. And I think that's a great thing for uh, myself and our Oklahoma State culture. So what has your life been like these past few days ever since you got that phone call? Uh, what, what has life been like for you? Uh, life. <laughs> Life right now has been very fun. I've been interacting with some Bears fans on uh, Twitter, Instagram, getting some follows, getting some uh, some tweets back at them, you know, start messing with them and uh, let them know I'm ready to work with them and I'm ready to put in my time and put my head down and work. And it's just, um, these past couple days, I've just been uh, on phone calls with my online coach, uh, Coach Castillo, uh, learning new stuff, learning my plays and try to get integrated then with the system and making sure I can uh, go into rookie mini camp here in a little bit and go in there uh, flawless and seamless. And so what's next for you? What are the next few steps? Uh, right now, uh, right now is just uh, lifting, running, doing anything I can with offensive line work until uh, next Wednesday, May 12th. And that's when I'm flying out to Chicago. And last I heard, uh, I believe that our mini camp is the 17th. So when I fly the next Wednesday, I'm going to be, uh, I guess I'm trying to settle in, get my uh, feet on the ground, get away to the land, and start doing uh, anything I can to get myself comfortable. If you had a message for Chicago Bears fans, what would you say to them? You know, it took me a couple, uh, took me a couple days, but I learned it. Just two words, bear down, that's it. That's awesome. And for you, when you reflect back to, on your time here at Oklahoma State, you are now, you know, officially a Chicago Bear mm -hmm. and a former Oklahoma State offensive lineman. So mm -hmm. when you reflect back on your time here, everything you learned, everything you went through, can you kind of wrap that up for me and, um, you know, just kind of talk about your time here? Yeah, uh, my first year here, you know, it was my rest of our years here, the year to develop. Uh, I started trusting the process uh, and being able to trust the process with here at Oklahoma State with uh, Coach Glass learning and being more open to uh, different ways of learning basically uh, in the weight room and then on the field. And being able to do that, uh, I showed progression through my years, uh, seeing that I was a six man my uh, registered freshman year. 
and I'm seeing some time at right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle. I was all over the place. Like, I was the man. Uh, if you needed anybody to go in, I was a dude. And throughout my whole years, you know, I was at starting right tackle, left tackle, whatever I needed to do for my team. And uh, but I'll say throughout my whole years, it was just all about how you get better. Like, it was just all about pushing myself and how much uh, this school pushed me. And I'm really grateful and glad that uh, Coach Glass, Coach Gundy, and uh, all my O-line coaches I've had since I've been here that believed in me and gave me my shot. Awesome, well, congratulations. I cannot wait to watch you in the NFL for many seasons to come. That is Chicago Bears offensive lineman, Tevin Jenkins. all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. This one is intercepted. Yeah. Decorative towel. There was a mess. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you Game day is a go. There's a Bud Light there. Welcome back to the OSU Roundup. I am joined now by Oklahoma State head softball coach Kenny Gajewski. Thank you so much for joining me, coach. We have a big weekend ahead of us. You guys had a huge weekend last weekend getting the sweep of Texas down in Austin, and now we turn our attention to OU for the final home series of the regular season. Let's start with Texas. What was it like going down there and get a sweep of the Longhorns? Well, it's always good to win in, in conference. Uh, it doesn't matter who you're up against. They're all tough games. Um, you know, going down there uh, – was a big weekend for us, just preparing us for what's ahead. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of su success against Texas. I think we've won 11 of our last 13. So I think it tells you a little bit about us and where we stand in this conference. But um, it's just very, very good to go watch our kids per perform and play high, a high level of softball and uh, we hit the ball well we pitched well made some great some great some great plays and it just propels us to what we've got now. And heading into a series as big as Bedlam, a Big 12 title on the line, how nice is it coming off of a sweep like that? Well, it's imperative. I mean, uh, when you're playing a team like o OU, who historically is uh, one of the best teams in, in the country um, over the last uh, 15 years, been the best team in, the, in, in this conference. And so it's up to us to go take back what we, what we want. And it's going to be a tough task, but I think this team is, is up for the challenge, and I think we'll play very well. Do you feel like this team this year is probably the most well-equipped to beat OU in your time here? I think so. I think the pitching depth that we have, the hitters that we have, um, the experience that we're gaining, um, it's a process, and it's, and it's tough. It's hard. And um, this, this group just seems like they're the group that uh, – wants to make it happen, and uh, not that any of our other groups didn't want to make it happen, but this group seems to have what it takes. And OU has never seen Carrie Everly. What, can, what should her mindset be going into, you know, Friday's game? You know, I've been talking to Carrie about this uh, this week, and, uh, the, and the message to her has been just be you. We don't need a superhuman performance. We just need you to be you. OU has a history of intimidating teams before the uh, game even gets started, and I don't think Carrie is going to fall in to that at all. I think, like I told her, I said, we don't have to play perfect to win. We just need, need to play really good, and, and uh, I think we will. Is that your message, you know, to Carrie, but also to the entire team? Just be you and, and play your game? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, Bedlam's a special deal. And um, we've been talking a little bit about what that's all about and what that means, what that means to us, what that means to our fans, to their fans, and how important that this is. They have something that, that we want, and they're not just going to give it up. And we're going to have to go take it. Um, and that's the only way it's going to happen. And, and so um, that's the challenge here is go take uh, what, what we want. And um, I just can't wait for Friday night. 
and it's here in Stillwater. What can you expect from the crowd? I know it's COVID, but uh, I mean, probably going to be the best crowd of the season. How exciting is it to, to have the fans out there and as much as there can be, um, you know, cheering you guys on? Yeah, I think it'll be an incredible scene. Um, I think the one word I can use to explain what it'll be like is bedlam. <laughs> That's a good one. And, um, you know, this is a super regional like matchup. This is a Women's College World Series matchup for you guys. Um, you know, how is having that in the regular season going to prepare you for when you get to the postseason here in a few weeks? It's, this is what it's all about. I mean, you need to have these type of series. Uh, we had one last week. Um, we've had a couple others. Um, this is what you've got to have to prepare you for the end. And um, I wouldn't want it any other way to have um, the two best teams besides us in this conference up to this point um, to play. Um, we've got that in front of us. It's all you can ask for. I'm proud of our kids, the way they've put themselves in position to take a Big 12 championship. It should be a great weekend of softball here in Stillwater. You can catch Bedlam on ESPN Plus Friday night at 6 o'clock, on ESPN at 3 on Saturday, and then on ESPNU at 11 on Sunday. We'll be right back after the break. First step at mercy.net slash cowboys ortho. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. Welcome back to the OSU Roundup. I am now joined by head baseball coach Josh Holiday. Thank you so much for joining me, coach. You bet, Jessica. All right. We are coming off of a Bedlam series with a huge win in game three on Sunday in 12 innings. Walk me through that game. Oh, well, we'd need about five hours to get through the whole thing, but uh, it, was a, it was a tough game. It was a marathon. It was uh, an important game for us, having lost the first two. So important to get that last game of the series, and uh, uh, it was a battle. Um, we had a, a lead. Uh, OU answered. Uh, they took the lead late. We responded with uh, two runs in the top of the ninth to tie it, and then Kel Davis, what else can you say? His, uh, his performance down the stretch and innings, uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12, putting up zeros, gave us a chance to scratch out a run and ultimately win what was a very exciting, very gutty game by our team. And uh, salvage the last game of a series, a uh, tough series for us. Game two, we had a lead uh, that got away from us. Game one, we simply let the, the score get away from us really early in that one. So it was a, it was a weekend of uh, uh, challenge for our team. And uh, ultimately, in, in day three and in the final game, we responded to the challenge. I was proud of the team for that. Uh, not many teams have the sustainability uh, to fight through sometimes what could be a, uh, uh, an emotional roller coaster of being ahead and being behind like that. But Sunday was a turning point for us, something we've talked about a couple of times since that game of how to use that momentum and what we learned on Sunday moving forward for the rest of the season. Do you feel like that win may be the most important win you guys have had of the season so far? Yeah, I think that's uh, very accurate because uh, at the time in which it occurred and the way in which the game unfolded, uh, it was a gut check. And it was a gut check at a time where your, your resolve to stay in the moment and fight uh, was put on display. And the kids, uh, they did that. And uh, it was up and down the lineup. It wasn't just Kale, although he was the center of, of the pitching and the defensive side in those late innings. It was all the kids on the field, all the kids in the dugout. Everyone involved with the team, staying with it and fighting to the very end. So uh, I think in many ways that game brought us together. It, uh, it, it pulled all members of the team towards that common goal of getting out of here with a win. And I think we all walked out of there much more um, unified in, in what it felt like for everybody to pour themselves into something. 
What does this do for Kale Davis, someone you know who is a second-year freshman? What does a win like that do for him, for his confidence, you know, for his future here with Cowboy Baseball? Yeah, you could see it in his eyes. You could just see the the confidence and fierceness with which he was pitching, with which he was competing. Uh, the way in which he came off the mound and embraced his team and, and obviously the way he felt after the game. There was a different level of accomplishment in his mind. Uh, I think in his heart he knew that he had put it all out there and maybe for the first time competed fearlessly with absolutely no fear of failure whatsoever and it elevated him to a, a much higher level in terms of his personal performance but also as you spoke on long term his confidence and him knowing uh, if I can go all in like I did tonight, uh, execute my pitches with a fearless mentality uh, pitch from the heart, pitch from my gut, meaning I, I reach back each time and make a pitch I need to uh, on behalf of my team. There was another gear in there for him, and he found it. And uh, that was really special to see because I think he's been on the brink for quite some time, and that particular game gave him a chance to kind of get over the hump. And now you guys head to Kansas. Only two more Big 12 series of the regular season for y'all. What have you seen from the Jayhawks? Oh, well, like every other Big 12 team, they're very capable. And every single weekend, um, you've got to be dialed in. Uh, they'll be at home. They've got a couple of good starting pitchers that have had success for them and some veterans in their lineup. So we'll need to be on point uh, as we continue to kind of evolve through this season and adjust to some of the injuries we've had. Uh, we've got to just keep putting a really good game plan together each time out. And uh, guys are going to get a chance to step up and emerge. And hopefully there'll be another couple of uh, Kale Davis type moments where other guys have a great outing and, and do something to help us win these two or three games up there at Kansas. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. That is Josh Holiday. Thanks to Coach Holiday, to Kenny Gajewski, and to Tevin Jenkins for joining us on this week's show. We'll be right back here next week with all of your OSU updates. Thanks for watching.